Hello everybody, welcome to Coco's Crochet. I'm Litsa and today is our podcast number 47. It's the 31st of August 2023 which means here in Sydney, Australia it is the last day of winter and spring is in the air. I'm so very excited that tomorrow is the 1st of September so it's a change of season for most of us all around the world so enjoy the last few moments of whichever season you're in. I'm certainly happy that spring is approaching um, and I have been looking around my yarn room which brings to mind spring cleaning so that is something that I definitely will be doing and I might just share that little journey with you as well because there is a yarn explosion in here guys so what you see here is quite tame to what I'm seeing out there so I think that um, some spring cleaning is in order in this yarn room as well so stay tuned for that I hope you're all keeping well I know that we have quite a few friends that have joined us of late so welcome one and all but for those of you that have been around for the very beginning and along the way I cannot believe that in four weeks or just under a month we've been together for nearly a year so I am so very excited that you know that came to my mind today so I thought I'd share that with you um, so much has happened in the last year and it just seems like a blink of an eye. So thank you so much for coming back to hang out um, with us time and time again. So welcome tonight once again. I hope you're working on something. We've got quite a few things to get through tonight. In actual fact, there are 15 items on the agenda. So I will try to get through them as quickly as I can. But I just want to make sure that you know we get through everything um, so you know what's been going on in my week this week it has been a very busy week um, you know I'll talk to you about my birthday celebrations that was a lot of fun so that did take away from my crochet time but that's okay your birthday comes but once a year and you really do need to celebrate and enjoy it and I certainly did do that I hope you've all had a wonderful week as well down in the comments as always please share and let me know and let all of us know what you've been working on or what you've been doing so that way we can have a proper catch up so without any further ado i'll pop my clipboard down and i do have a pen because i will be ticking things off because i don't want to miss out on anything but what do we always start off with well seeing as it's thursday it's going to be tile of the week thursday of course now our friends sam and mike at manfers makes have created this amazing organic cow that we've all jumped on board there are i don't know how many i'll say hundreds of us because i don't know how many yarny friends are joining in other than you know um, youtube creators so for anyone that's new here i'll give you a little recap of what's going on and you might want to join us along for the ride as well so our friend Sam, as we said at Manfers Makes, was gifted this book, 100 Crochet Tiles in Happy Mail, last July. So not this July gone, a year and a bit ago. And she pledged to the whole world that she was going to create every single tile, which will take about two years. So at tile number 25, I decided that I was going to jump on board because it just looked like way too much fun. Little did I know how many challenges I'd be faced along the way, but also how many moments of joy that it would create for me because I've learned so much along the way. Many stitches I haven't tried before, techniques, learning how to use a graph because each and every pattern in here also has an accompanying graph. So that's a good way to teach yourself or use it as a useful tool because sometimes the directions in here or the pattern has not always been accurate. But again, another challenge and we've all risen to it. Um, if you want to go and see everybody's experiences, if you put in the hashtag Tile of the Week Thursday, you'll get hours and hours of viewing. There are some very hilarious moments on here. Um, let me tell you, it's brought me lots of fun hours of viewing as well. So this week's tile has, is completely different to all the tiles that we've done so far. It's mosaic crochet. And at the very first thought of that, I was excited because I do enjoy... Well, I have only made two projects, um, mosaic crochet, a big blanket and a very small swatch that was going to be a baby blanket, but I do enjoy the process. But I've never, ever created anything without using a YouTube tutorial. Now, there are no YouTube tutorials for the tiles in these books. They're all just the written pattern and the graph, as I just said. But Rosina Plain, who's the designer of this um, tile that we made this week, she has a YouTube channel. A Rosina crochet so I thought I'll just go on there and see if she's actually made a square before on there because I've only ever crocheted in rows 
never ever have I done it in um, uh, in a tile or a square so I was thinking to myself oh my goodness this is going to be very very tricky Rosina unfortunately didn't have um, a tutorial on how to create a crochet um, tile and I thought to myself well someone else must have done it I have to tell you I did find a YouTube tutorial on it I did watch it for a little while but I wasn't getting into it so I just put that down away and I thought let me just try to get through the pattern now the tile is number 56 this week and it's called the Annie I will show you a photo of it in a moment um, and I just want to say that I really enjoyed it because any of you that have made um, anything and the technique is the overlay mosaic technique that we were using for this tile if you've crocheted anything before other than like like a tile so if you've made blankets and other things um, you usually have like a pattern repeat and then you do that across the width of your project for example a blanket now I couldn't un comprehend how that would work in a tile but in essence it's so simple you follow the pattern the the whole one row is a pattern repeat and then you do your corner and then repeat it again so that's where the pattern repeat comes into play so when you get that into your head which is what I did then it's quite a simple process as long as you follow the instructions there were a couple of little areas that were a little bit of a hiccup but you get through that anyway because um the more we crochet the more we understand and know how to correct things because of you know our experience but somehow i got through the tile now for all of my tiles i use um 100 acrylic yarn and i use my eight ply which is a dk weight my marble yarn and i have seven colors that i pick and choose from now this week's tile wanted four different colors and i'll show you my tile in a moment and for all of my tiles i use a five millimeter hook as well so i'm hoping at the very end of it to be able to put all the tiles together in some sort of format connect them all together and create some sort of like a memory of this like a blanket of some sort so let me show you the tile um, in the book here it is here so it is called the annie as i said there it is there guys it is 20 rows or 20 rounds so it's quite a large tile i thought it was never going to end but i was enjoying the process so i actually really didn't mind um i think i did it in a sitting of maybe about five or six hours but not, sorry not in one sitting like an afternoon period but i was getting up and doing other things as well at the time so let me show you my tile now apologies i haven't woven in one end i don't know how that happened but there it is there up close whoops there you go and the back is quite neat as well so there you go guys there's my tile and josephine of course she sent in her tile as well wait till you see her gorgeous colors absolutely love it beautiful now josephine has been using a stylecraft dk color pack from ophelia talks which is a couple of years old now and she does use her 3.5 millimeter clover and more hook now she did say that she enjoyed crocheting this tile um, the overlay mosaic and it, anything is better than a hattie or a katie tile now for those of you that are new you need to go and watch some older videos so that you can understand what that means so well done josephine your tile is absolutely gorgeous thank you for sending it in and here's our tiles oh can i get them up because they're huge side by side there you go guys so tile of the week thursday tile number what are we at did we say 56 tick done and i'm actually going to tick it on my clipboard because i want to make sure that we know that that's finished and i'm actually quite happy to report that next week is going to be another uh, mosaic tile so i wonder what that one's going to be like i haven't actually looked at the pattern uh, i usually don't um, until you know i finish with today and then a day or two from now or usually on the weekend i have a little bit of time and i create it then now our friend bonnie she's jumped on board the tile of the week thursday bandwagon as well and she has been crocheting away from the very beginning i think this is week two for her um, and she has been trying to make a tile a day so let me show you her beautiful tiles now this is tile number eight I love those colors and it's called rainbows and rays 
and um, Bonnie says that she's learned that it's very important to look carefully where the comma is placed in these patterns. And let me tell you, Bonnie, along the way, you'll find a few little errors, but I'm sure you'll work out how to correct them, being a seasoned crocheter that you are. Now, Bonnie uses Karen Simply Soft, and she's collected um, six colours that she's using. This one has soft white in it, pistachio, sunshine, autumn, blue mint, and she's using her five millimeter hook as well absolutely gorgeous and wait till you see this one now this one is called orange twist i love the orange in the middle and she's got soft white sunshine and blue mint as well very very pretty now we are up to tile number 12 and bonnie says yes she didn't miss out two tiles she will go and revisit them because she has a beautiful yarn group a yarny um, group that she gets together i'm guessing weekly and she's just going to discuss the pattern with them so they can just give her a little bit of a helping hand what a wonderful idea to tap into your resources after all that's what friends are for now this one is tile number 12 and it's called mind the gap and um it says he all yarn oh, i beg your pardon let me see what it says guys i haven't got my glasses on and the lights in the way and i don't want to miss out okay so every row is in single crochet 30 single crochets in each one so bonnie says she might need a bit of a blocking and it wouldn't um, hurt to give it a border and the colors that she's used are orchid sunshine white and pistachio absolutely gorgeous and then lucky last for this week it's tile number 13. It's called Southwestern Shells. And the colours are blue mint, pistachio, so blue mint, pistachio, sunshine, autumn, and white. And um, Bonnie says this was a simple tile and it was a good day to crochet. So thank you so much, Bonnie, for sending them through. They're absolutely gorgeous. And well done to you for powering on and getting so many done in a in a week i struggle to get one done so that is amazing keep up the good work now let me just tick that remember guys i'm going to be stopping every time tonight now i'm going to showcase some of your wonderful makes so our lovely friends liza thea and wendy have sent something through for us to share so let me show you this so these are from liza and it is a gorgeous little meerkat. Look at him. I absolutely love him. If my daughter saw this, she would want him as well. And this is a little meerkat. And the design or the pattern is by Heather C. Gibbs. I'll show you another little view of him. And it, um, the pattern was found in the Crochet Now magazine. He's so cute. And Liza is only two rows away from finishing her Bella Vita shawl. How gorgeous is that, guys? Look at the colours. And that's the yarn that she's using there. And that's what it looks like. She's got a very pretty stitch marker on there as well. So thank you so very, very much, Liza, for sharing um, your beautiful makes. As always, your amigurumi skills are amazing. And that Bella Vita sure looks awesome. Well done to you. Now, our friend Thea, wait till you see what she's sending. This is beyond cute. Adorable. So basically... You will not believe that these are um, so tiny. So this is the um, Princess Jasmine from Aladdin, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Look at that. Let me bring it up a bit closer. Look at the little shoes. So this is for a size six to nine month old little babies. How adorable is that? Now, Thea has used eight ply or DK weight acrylic yarn. And the pattern, she had purchased it a couple of years ago from Etsy, but it was from a Russian seller who is no longer on there. And all I can say is adorable. Thank you for sending that in, Thea. There you go, guys, a little bit closer. And look at the wig the hair absolutely gorgeous so thank you very very much there for sending them through they certainly brought a smile to my face and i'm sure to everybody else's as well now my friend wendy from coco's crochet corner she actually um allowed me to showcase her gorgeous blanket tonight and let me show it to you and then i'll tell you what she's used so basically it's a continuous granny square oh my god it's huge guys there look at the colors up close absolutely beautiful and um, wendy's trademark shell border absolutely gorgeous now wendy always likes to use a 5.5 millimeter hook 
let me just pop it there so it, we can still admire its beauty so a 5.5 millimeter hook and she is using so these are the colors that she used and it is um the spot saver which is one of mine and her favorite yarns so it's spot saver which is about a 10 ply yarn it's 100 percent acrylic there you go there absolutely gorgeous and um i'm sorry i don't know how many balls she used but i would say at an absolute minimum she probably would have used six now these are 200 grams each and about um 200 meters as well let me have a look guys i never remember i never can find the yardage on this thing 312 meters so there's quite a lot of meterage in each one of these so thank you so very very much wendy for sharing that beautiful blanket with us now she said all she needs to do now is take it home wash it and it'll go to for its forever home some very lucky person will be receiving that very very lucky if you ask me now they're your makes for the week everybody thank you for allowing me to showcase them absolutely love them remember whoever wants me to showcase your work I always love sharing. Just send me an email, attach the photo, let me know that I can share and I would be happy to do so. And if you just want to share something for me to have a look at, that is always very welcome as well. Thank you for that. Now, what have I been up to? Well, as I said, I've had a very, very busy week kend so it took away from some of my crochet time but i have managed to get a few things done to show you the first thing that i will show you is my squares for comfort now those of you who aren't familiar it is a program here that's run with some volunteers in newcastle and they collect squares 20 by 20 centimeters and then they put them together and then they give them um, you know to nursing homes and veterans and whoever needs them in the community and also um, so basically they prefer the darker colors but if you send lighter colors they give them to the children at Ronald McDonald house now I have um, worked out that if I create um, 35 squares it'll make a blanket which is the ideal size for them one meter by 1.4 meters um, what I'm using to create the tiles uh, or the squares is again just the spot saver yarn I've got all the colors in the rainbow and more over there and i do use for all of them my six millimeter hook and each tile is seven rows let me just check before i show you so there's one one two three four five yeah so each um tile is seven rows let me just show you one that you might be able to see a bit better so they're just very very basic um Granny squares, I turn them on each um, row or round to make sure that they're nice and square. So this week I've managed to complete another 10. So I have um, done them in the navy blue and then I've done them in the light grey and also in the dark grey, which I just showed you. And reason being is um, these are the eight that I had made before. I'm trying to tie them into... Um, this color way here so basically this one is called where have I got it? it's a prince and it's black and white I get in the spot saver and in there you can see that there's navy there's gray there's blue and there's white I probably steer away from the white because they don't really want the lighter color but in total now I've got 18 so we've just passed the halfway mark which means I have 17 more to go so hopefully I can do those over the next few weeks and then I'll be able to send it off to them in the post um, that's just a fun project that I do at the end of the night usually when I really don't have to think very much and I can just watch TV or YouTube and crochet them so well with a little bit of time I'm sure I'll complete them sooner than later so tick that as well now another project that I've been working on is my um, crocheting beanies for Chris O'Brien Lifehouse now most of us um, have been touched by cancer my family certainly has my dad fought very hard for eight years um, he passed 10 years ago but I have to say that the care that he received from the RPA hospital who's attached they're, they're attached to the Chris O'Brien Lifehouse um, just made the journey so much um, easier um, and they also offer support to families so the minute that I found out that they were needing beanies immediately I jumped on board and I will continue to do this over the years but for the moment I had pledged 
hopefully 20 beanies before the end of the month. And guess what, guys? I managed to finish four more beanies this week, which brings the tally up to 20. So here's the original. Oh, here they all are in here. Here's the 16 that I had collected up until last week. And these are the four that I'll be adding this week. And then I'm done. So all of my beanies are the same. I made them very, very basic um, using my six millimeter of my favorite um, six millimeter crochet hook, um, five rounds, and then just doing the body of it, some ribbing. And I did manage to make one, two, three using this yarn. All the yarn that I've used for every single beanie has been millens, and then I completed this one again, millens. Now, I was using a 7mm hook for this yarn because it was quite bulky. I ended up using a 6mm one for this time, and it's just turned out a little bit more snug. But let's face it, everyone has a different size head, so I'm sure that it'll be good, put to good use. So I can now pop these into my bag, get onto the phone and organise a drop-off date. And that will bring me so much joy doing that. And hopefully it'll keep some heads warm that need it. Um, even though the spring is in the air, we do get very cool mornings and very cool nights. So I'm so very happy to report that I have finished that little project for now. So I can tick that off my list. Now, the next little project that I managed to get one tile in, I was hoping for two. But hey, I'm happy that I actually did it. I've been crocheting um squares for the advent calendar from crochet society 2022 because i do know that 2023's calendar will be released shortly so this is the tile that i made this week it's called the puff stitch so basically it's just a solid granny square but in this row here i think it was row number five they wanted us to reverse the um work on the reverse side and go up a hook size and do a row of puff stitches now for me i'm not sure if i really like that because it did make it a little bit floppy but i'm sure when i connect it all is going to look just fine it is the same size as the other tiles i did measure them so what i used for these was for the most of the um so the bulk of the um square was made with a 3.5 millimeter hook now these beautiful hooks did come in the um, advent calendar and there's also a four millimeter hook they are very nice hooks. I'm actually getting used to using the polymer clay hooks. I hadn't used them until um, recently, and now that I'm getting used to them, I don't enjoy them as much as my, you know, Clover and More hooks. I have to say these are my favourite, but I am quite enjoying those hooks. And this week, the colours that we used were clotted cream. Now, these are DK weight or 8-ply um, yarn. They are specially made for Bella Coco and the Crochet Society, and they are 100% acrylic. And look at this little one. There's hardly anything left, and it's called Wine Gums. Very Christmassy. The other one, not so much, but it does look very pretty together. So hopefully for next week, I will have another tile made up or another square. I keep calling them tiles now. Um, so next week will be square number 9. And it is going to be, oh, okay, textured trebles. Oh, I'll just show you that way so you can see it. Now, I do believe that was the first one that we made as well. So we've already made that one. Ah, oh, yeah, there it is, number one. I'm wondering if it's going to be in a different colour, but I haven't looked at it any further than where I am at now, so it's almost like a little surprise for me as well. And I do, even though I've opened the advent calendar, I do still enjoy opening each box, uh, sorry, each drawer and seeing what's in there. So let's tick that off our list. Now, the next thing that I've done, which is awesome, I completed um, last week, I told you I finished all the can cozies for the Father's Day store, and all I had to do was bag them and for presentation and I've got a little photo of um, them ready because I have delivered them so they're ready for the Father's Day stall tomorrow there were 30 in total and they were on consignment can you guys see that or is it too glary too bubbly here's one with the football team colors um, and they're all the little stickers I managed to get Father's Day stickers I'm not sure if you can see them up close there but they turned out to be really nice way to seal them and present them so i'm very very happy with that and again another um, little project that i had a little deadline for and managed to get it done so tick for that as well i'm very happy that that's done and hopefully some dads will really enjoy receiving them 
Now, we've got a beautiful little baby coming into the family in about two weeks, maybe even before that. So I've got to really finish this project. So my son's fiance sister is going to have her little baby very, very soon. And all, we are all very, very excited. So I thought that I would make, oh, let me take it out of the plastic so it's easier for you to see. I found this pattern from Yarnspirations. And it is a very simple baby jacket um, and a little beanie. So I haven't started the beanie yet, as yet, and I've nearly finished the little baby jacket. And I'll show it to you and then I'll tell you what yarn I've used. Look how adorable it is, guys. I actually made the newborn size. I'm, I'm thinking maybe I should have made the um, three to six months, but it is going to be getting warm here soon. So the only thing that I did different is I did a little bit of ribbing on the sleeve here. Now those holes, don't think I've made a mistake. That's the pattern. You actually have to go in and sew that. That's the way that um, Mikey from Crochet Crowd told us we had to do it. And the only other thing that I changed as well, if you can see up close, instead of just doing double crochets for every row, I did some cross stitches, which cross double crochets. You know, I absolutely love those. Now I love that we get to put three rows of single crochet to finish off the front and all we need to do is put a little ribbon at the top to um so that it doesn't open up but i'm thinking i might put a little um bit of ribbon so i'll see how we go hopefully i'll have this all finished during the week and show you next week the completed um little project because this is a work in progress at the moment now i did use this gorgeous yarn it is so so soft this is the bella baby baby wonder yarn can you see the speckling on the, like that? Uh, isn't it gorgeous? I absolutely love this yarn. I have used it before and it is 60% acrylic and 40% um, nylon. I guess that's what makes it so super soft and squishy. I It is an eight ply or a DK weight yarn and I did use a five millimeter hook with it. So, you know, I use that even though it recommends a four, I thought with my tight crocheting, I'd be better off using the five millimeter hook and i do recall last year i had or oh, sorry earlier on in the year i had made a little um, baby dress and i used the same size hook with the same size yarn and it really did work very well together so our little baby as i said is due in two weeks so we're all very very excited i've already made a baby blanket which i have already showed you i might um, bring all the set out and show it to you all together next week hopefully it'll all be done fingers and toes crossed guys so that's another little whip which I'm hoping will be done before I see you next Thursday. That'd be great. Now, some of you may have already seen my episode number two for crocheting with blanket yarn. If you, have already, if you haven't already done so, I need to slow down. Please do go and do so. But I'll just show you the little bag here. Here it is. It's already been out and about. I took it out for my birthday. Let me just show you inside here. It's got... It's quite spacious inside, quite roomy. And basically all it is, is two granny squares, a panel and a handle, sorry, two little handles. You can make it into a shoulder bag if you want. And I did use a book, um, cro uh, super size crochet to make it out of. But if you don't have that book, if you just create two granny squares, any sort of squares that you like, I'm pretty sure you can produce it. And I absolutely loved using the blanket yarn for this. I'm just, I don't know if you can see all the sparkle in there. Absolutely love it. And um, all this yarn here was um, part of my Millen's purchase not too long ago, which I had highlighted in my yarn haul video. So that's another one that you might want to go and visit if you haven't already done so. So... Um, that was episode two. I'm currently thinking of a couple of other projects to add to that um, little mini series. So look out for that one as well. Now, the th next thing that I want to show you guys is that I did have a um, voucher from Spotlight, a $10 voucher for my birthday, because that's what they do. They gift you one for your birthday. They're very, very clever, aren't they? Because they know you're not just going to spend $10. But yarn was on sale, 30% off. So the Bella Baby range, which I absolutely love, was on sale for 30% off. So I bought the yarn that I just showed you for the little jacket, the baby jacket. I bought three of those. And these were down to $5.10. So the, the other one is nearly finished. So I thought I'd buy a couple more because I knew that I'd be using it for all the babies that are coming in our 
family we're so lucky and then i also managed to get and here here's the rest of them guys i love this basket by the way the bella baby um the baby chenille and this one is 100 percent polyester and these are only 50 gram balls and they were down to two dollars and ten cents so i bought all the ones that had the same dye lot i uh, couldn't resist absolutely gorgeous and if you've seen any of my previous videos on baby blankets you know that my whole family loves and family and friends love receiving blankets in that yarn so i couldn't go wrong and i thought i'd better snatch it up while it's at a good price so that was a little bit of shopping that i did on the weekend i snuck that in as well so that was great <laughs> now um last week it was such a fun um you know segment so many of you absolutely loved it so i'm going to try and you know incorporate it in future um podcasts we did story time so that was for a lot of our little friends i thought they would enjoy it, but so did some of our you know people my age and everybody else because who doesn't love a good story so i just thought i'd show you a photo of um, my friend um my girlfriend roseanne uh at the teacher librarian um who i crocheted the hats for for the book parade and she dressed up for frank's red hat and she's actually dressed up as frank now frank is a penguin for those of you that don't know she looks so good there she is wearing one of the hats and holding one of the hats and then i thought i'd just show you a photo of the two of us together so there you go guys it was such a nice day i must say that i did stop work for a little bit and you know that's one of the beautiful things about working in the school you can actually you know go out and enjoy the children having such a glorious day two children were dressed up as dinosaurs and let me tell you they were dancing the whole entire time that brought so, so much joy to all of us my face as i was like it's from smiling so much it just hurts and the parents were there it was such a beautiful event so roseanne well done another great book week parade you can tick that off your list you did an awesome job and the beanies look great let me tell you especially the one with all the sequins sparkling in because we've got a beautiful day for it and um, the sun was shining it was glorious so that's that one tick <laughs> now there's one more thing and we're nearly done guys thank you for hanging around i just want to thank you all for all your birthday messages um so many in the comments and emails are so very very blessed that i have so many yarny friends you made my birthday week even more special now um i'll just show you a photo of some of the flowers that my family gave me because this is you know the sharing of life part and you know i'm hoping that you don't all mind because it's not just yarn so they are absolutely gorgeous my home it looks like a just just beautiful flowers just you know really do add some brightness and sunshine to your day and my family knows me so well guys that oh it's over here let me reach over and get it guess what i got for my birthday of course a spotlight gift card what more could i ask for i was so very very happy when that happened and i was um you know i thought my family knows me well that is excellent so thank you to my beautiful family but the highlight of my week and the piece de resistance as they say is i actually um really enjoy this even though i visit my mom every single saturday or i endeavor to um we always have lunch together and wonderful chats but she prepared all of my favorite food and because she was having a really good week health wise you know thank you um she made my favorite or i should say our family's favorite cake now i will show you a photo of it it's absolutely gorgeous it is just a simple butter cake or yellow cake and in the middle she puts fresh cream and she decorates it with strawberries and blueberries and can you see that guy there's h for happy b for birthday and l for litza so she does that each and every birthday for us for as long as i can remember and that's what we all wait for that's when we know that our birthday is now complete so when i went over and to my surprise there was a cake waiting there for me it was just amazing because I knew my mum was having a really good week. So I just wanted to share that with you. I think it's the simplest thing in life that brings us the most joy. And I just wanted to share that with you as well because you absolutely made me feel very special with all your wonderful, wonderful wishes. So I wanted to thank you for that. So that's pretty much my week in a nutshell, guys. Um, 
it has been a wonderful week i've uh, been busy crocheting um i don't want to end on a dibby downer so please don't get upset when i say this the only thing that was missing was breakfast with coco but she was there in our heart so i just wanted to let you know that she was still there with me on my birthday and will be forever with us and i like i said i didn't want to upset anyone but i just wanted to share that with you that we got through that moment as well now i just remembered that crochet society sent me an email um, box 44 is on its way so expect that um, unboxing in the next couple of weeks i hope you're all doing well thank you for hanging out with me for so long i thought it would be a shorter night tonight but it wasn't i had a lot more to share than i thought um these are one of my most special days of the week i always say that to people i look forward to sharing my time with you and hanging out with you and waiting to see in the comments what you've been up to as well so until our next little get together take care everyone and i shall see you very soon bye bye everybody